Hello, and welcome back to our tutorial on Evocron Mercenary. My name is Marlo, and in this episode we're going to be covering uh, the basics of docking at uh, space stations and how to land on planets. And we're also going to be talking about uh, the inventory console and uh, how you can use that uh, to do various things uh, when you're docked uh, at a station or have landed on a planet. So. Uh, let's pull up our nav map so we can see where we are. As usual, we are in our uh, our empty sector here, our tutorial sector, if you will. We're one sector to the galactic south of the uh, starting planet, uh, starting space station. So we're going to use this this space station right here uh, as an example. Uh, this is Evocron Station. It is the kind of center point of the Evocron sector in which the game takes place. So. How do we dock? Well, the first thing, obviously, is we need to be close to the station. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways that you can dock at a space station in this game. So, the first way, and the way that most people, I think, start out doing it, is they set a waypoint, you know, that's... Uh, oops, that was the wrong button. They set a waypoint that's pretty close to the station. And... Uh, and this way works perfectly well. I'm going to show you a more efficient way here in a few minutes, but... Uh, let me show you kind of um, the basic way, if you will. Uh, so we're going to be in inertial flight mode. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of speed. Not too much, just enough to, to be moving. And then we're going to hit jump. And that's the wrong button. We're going to hit jump. There we go. It's F2, not F1. <clears throat> so now we jump. And we're going to end up right here in the vicinity of the space station. Now, what do you do now? Well, uh, kind of the thing to do. Ooh, getting a little lag there. Um, would be to accelerate towards the station. And boy, we have the sun right behind us here. Let me see if I can maneuver to a uh, different area where the sun won't be quite as much of an issue. Uh, there we go. That's a little bit better. So, okay. So, you can see these little openings uh, in front of the space station. That is, oh, there's the sun again. Let's go back the other way. Those are the openings uh, for docking. So, what we want to do is we want to be flying into one of those openings. And this is where your W, A, S, and D keys really come in handy. So I'm just moving that light blue indicator around and basically what I want to do is have it so that uh, so that I'm going to be, you know, flying into that opening. And you don't spacecraft. You are clear to dock through gate. Okay. Alright, we just got a docking message. Now you can see these red rectangles uh, that look like they're kind of coming at us. That shows our our, tra our trajectory relative to the docking bay at the moment. What we want to do, and I'm going to slow the ship down a bit, but what we want to do is use our W, A, S, and D keys to move that blue cursor in such a way so that, that those red rectangles that appear to be coming at us go from red to green. See, they just turned to green. That means on my current path that I will enter the docking bay no problem. Now, once you enter the docking bay, you're pretty much home free. It's hard to mess up from this point. If you just keep flying towards the central pillar, a tractor beam will kick in and drag your ship into the dock. Now, <clears throat> once you're here, you can do some inventory management and buy things and equip your ship and some other stuff. We're going to go over that in a little bit. But for now, uh, what we're going to do is... Uh, just kind of see how that happened but what we're going to do now is undock to undock you just close the inventory console you can hit this X up here you can also hit the F3 button and the docking tractor beam is, has turned us loose and to leave the station all you do is accelerate oh there's another ship uh, that's our shields colliding so you don't have to worry too much about collision damage in this game it's pretty forgiving about that also, if you collide with the side of the uh, space station, it's really not going to damage your ship in any way. 
So don't worry too much about that. Now, now that we're out of the space station, you just accelerate out of the opening. Don't worry about other ships. Nine times out of ten, uh, nobody is going to be there anyway. And even if they are, you know, like I say, it's not really going to bother you. So we're going to select one of our waypoints back out here. And then we're going to uh, jump to the waypoint. <coughs> back out to our sector. Our, our tutorial sector. So here we are. <clears throat> and we're going to bring the ship to a halt using the IDS and the backspace key. All right. Now, that's one way to dock. That's the way that takes a little bit longer and it uses a little more fuel. Uh, but, you know, it can be fun, um, actually, once you kind of get the hang. And it's not as bad as it looks. if you, As long as you keep your speed relatively low, I would advise you to keep your speed uh, somewhere if, uh, around your velocity, if uh, down here, if you keep your velocity somewhere in the neighborhood of like 500 or so, you can uh, easily maneuver your ship into the docking bay. Now you can also use IDS and that will make it uh, a little bit easier as well. But again, keeping your speed relatively low will enable your IDS to uh, compensate for your changes in ship facing more quickly like we talked about before so I would again keep your speed around 500 or so uh, for manual docking now in some space games some space sims like the X series for example or freelancer uh, which I've done a video series on there is kind of an auto docking procedure where you just hit a button and you don't have to worry about it this game doesn't really have that but if you know how the stations work, you can kind of set yourself up for really easy docking. So, how do you do that? Well, let's go back into our nav screen. Now we're going to go, we're going to zoom back in here on the uh, space station. Now, if you recall, last time I put a nav point about right here where I'm pointing with the cursor. This time I'm going to put my cursor right over the middle of the space station and right click. Now usually if I want to put a nav point out here I would left click not right click. But if you right click on an object like a space station or a jump gate which is what this purple square is uh, it automatically sets your navigational point to a point just outside the jump gate or the space station. Uh, it, it's designed this way to kind of help you uh, you know kind of line things up. So uh, so that's what we're gonna do now I don't do that with a planet do not do that with a planet bad things will happen to you you'll be reloading uh, your save game so we're gonna right click on the space station and you'll note that the uh, nav point is centered on the space station now uh, so the thing to do now the thing to do now is to line your ship up to zero it out is the way I think of it. How do you do that? Well, you make sure that your pitch indicators are at zero. You'll see up here it says 10. Down here it says negative 10. Right? That's our pitch up and down. And then the zero mark basically has these uh, little arrows right here and right here on this side. So make sure your pitch is at zero. And then yeah, make sure your pitch is at zero. Make sure your roll, that's your Q and E key, is mostly leveled out. You don't have to get that exact, but, uh, you know, more or less level really helps. And then, the other thing you want to do is look up here at your compass, and you're going to want to put your compass on about 45 degrees. And the reason for that is, is because of the way that the... Uh, it's because of the way that the openings to the space station docking area um, it's because of the way they are set up so we're going to we're going to move it to about 45 degrees now I'll give you a little tip I have found it to be now this is right on 45 degrees I have actually found it to work a little bit better uh, for some reason, don't ask me why, I have found it to be a little bit better 
to put that you see the center line that goes up and down that shows you what your heading is if you put it just to the left in other words to line it up over the four like this not quite 45 degrees it's hard to it's hard even in the game to make out these little bitty, little bitty degree markers but you know you're looking at like think of it as like 44 degrees but just basically put your heading line right through the middle of the four and that's where you want to be uh, it works a little bit better uh, than right on the 45. I don't know if that is on purpose or if that is a slight bug, but just don't worry about why. I don't really understand why. It just works that way. So I'm going to give myself, uh, again, a l oops, I'm in inertial mode. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, I want to be in inertial mode. I'm going to give myself a little bit of speed, around 500 or so. I'm at 550. Now, I've got my pitch leveled out, I've got my roll leveled out, and I'm headed at, you know, close to 45 degrees with the line just over the four I'm gonna hit the jump button now what should happen is I should be lined up exactly or close enough anyway with the actual opening to the space station and as you can see because I was in inertial mode I just coasted right in there I actually didn't push a button I didn't move the mouse I didn't use the thrusters on my ship to alter my course um, yeah so Line it up like that, and you can just coast right in to the station. Now, you can do the same thing with a jump gate, but I'll tell you this. Don't line it up with 45 degrees. You're heading on a jump gate. If you want to kind of smooth dock in the jump gate, get yourself some momentum in inertial mode. Be coasting, so to speak. Have your ship, uh, the pitch, zeroed out just like we did. Put your heading right on zero. Instead of 45, put it right on zero if you're going to do that with a jump gate. And when you jump, you will land, land, excuse me, you'll enter the jump gate smoothly and be out of the system and on your way to the next star system. So uh, you can do that with jump gates as well. Again, don't do it with planets. I also, if I were you, would not do it with asteroid fields. I was telling you that the collision model is very forgiving when it comes to other ships and when it comes to the space stations. If you run inside the space station, it's going to put a little dent in your shields, but it'll recharge. It's not going to damage your ship. If you run into an asteroid, eh, you're pretty much dead. So don't do that with asteroid fields. But with jump gates and space stations, that is a really useful trick. So remember, just to the left of 45 degrees with the heading line running right down the middle of the 4 in the 45, uh, zero pitch, zero roll, a little forward momentum, and hit the jump button once you've right clicked on the station. If you want to do a jump gate, exact same story, but on your heading, make sure it's on zero, and you'll coast right into the jump gate very smoothly, no problem. It's as close as you're going to get to an auto docking feature in this game. So, now that we've landed twice at a space station, let's talk about the things that you can do here. So this is our inventory console, as you can see. <clears throat> now, just so you know, the game is not paused while I'm on the inventory console or while I am in the space station. Things are still going on outside around me. If I was in a hostile system right now, people could shoot at me. So, how do you avoid that? You hit this button and enter the station. You can do everything inside the station that you can do from inside your ship. If you're in a safe area, there's not much reason to enter the station unless you want to uh, modify your ship. And I will be teaching you how to do that, but that's going to be in a later video. We don't really have time to do that today. We're just going to go over the basics of the inventory console. But if you enter the station, and we'll go ahead and enter it. You know, you can do everything. See, the inventory console really hasn't changed, but you can play around the weapons lab and create weapons. You can play around the shipyard and add things to your ship or build yourself a completely new ship if you can afford it. And this is where your hangar is, where you can store several uh, other ships. Uh, you can only fly one ship at a time, unlike the X-Series, where you can have AI fly around some of your other ships. In this game, you can only fly one ship at a time, but you can store, I think it's up to five uh, ships in the hangar. It does cost you money. Uh, every so often, your bank account will get hit. So, But you can do that. But, uh, yeah. But, again, the inventory console is pretty much the same. So we're going to... Um, Go back out to the space station view. But just remember, the game is not paused while you're here. The um, the game 
you know, the ships can still attack your ship. Enemy ships could attack your ship while you're in this docking ring. If you, if we were in a hostile system, in a system that's safe, like the Sapphire system, you don't have to worry about that. So, just something to keep in mind. So, let's talk about the things that we see here. There's an item description window, which is currently blank because we're not mousing over anything. Um, there, it tells us our fuel readout, uh, which is 248 at the moment, and how many, how much money we have, which is 40,000 credits. This is the amount of money that you start with, uh, because I haven't done any missions on this character. This has just been my kind of demonstration character. So this is the amount of money you start with. Then, continuing down the right-hand side, we have our equipment window that shows... Uh, that's somebody running into us. Uh, this is our equipment window that shows the equipment we have equipped on our ship. If I mouse over one of these things, to the left, you'll see a picture of the item, at a sell price. Uh, if we wanted to sell this piece of equipment, we don't want to sell this piece of equipment. But if we did, there it is. And <clears throat> if you look over uh, further to the left, there's a brief description. This is the fulcrum jump drive that we've been using to hop, skip, and jump around the Sapphire system. Uh, we can currently, in our current ship design, equip three different pieces of equipment. One is our fulcrum jump drive. Two is a shield battery, which uh, stores power of the shields and has to do with their recharge and uh, their capacity and things like that. You can, you'll see that this says C1 that says X1. You know, there are upgrades um, for all of these things. But we just have the basic equipment right now. Uh, we can have more equipment slots in other ships that we uh, design um, or if we were to alter to the design of this ship that we have now so but again we'll talk about that when we it's going to be an entire episode on ship design it's fairly complex it's really cool but it's fairly complex so that's our equipment and and just pay no attention to the text box those AI who are trying to trade with me and uh, are kind of bothering us right now um, but that's the equipment window. Now below that is our cargo bay. You can have uh, five cargo bays, I think, is the maximum that you can have right now. Our starting ship has one. I think if you start with the trader slash miner starting profile, I think you have like two or three to start out with, if I remember correctly. But we started out with a mercenary one, which is kind of a generic, uh, not generic, but a more generalist, you know, jack of all trades, master of none type profile. And it's what I really like about this is everything's color coded. Equipment for your ship will always be yellow. Cargo, uh, whether it be raw materials or finished goods, will always be purple. And weapons will always be green. So here's our cargo bays. Right now we have one cargo bay. There's nothing in it. We have no cargo right now. Um, you can hit this button over here to jettison stuff in your cargo bay if you want to. Uh, now our primary weapons, uh, there are beam weapons which uh, do uh, mostly shield damage and then you can also have particle weapons which do mostly hull damage um, and that's you know in your primary weapon slots that's what you're always pretty much gonna have um, you could have two beam weapons I guess but there's no reason why you would ever do that and then secondary weapon slots secondary weapons uh, means missiles basically right now we have two secondary weapon slots we can put one missile in each slot uh, you can have, I think, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can have up to eight, apparently, uh, if you alter your ship in that way. There's always trade-offs. There's kind of a size limit on the ship that you have, and you have to kind of play around with things within the size limit. But again, we'll talk more about that later. But for right now, just know that we have two, and we have two missiles. So, yeah. Uh, the missiles are pretty powerful in this game, but you never have just a ton of them, so you got to use them pretty carefully. Now, uh, over here to the left in this big window are things that we can buy. Again, purple things are cargo. Uh, yellow things are um, ship equipment. And uh, you can't scroll. You actually have to drag the thing, which is, you know less than optimal but again one person made this game and then green are weapons that you can equip on your ship so um, you know to buy something and we're gonna buy something because they have a mine slash tractor beam here for 7500 credits this is one of the first things you should buy no matter which starting profile you pick you need one of these and you can almost always find it for sale on this station and in fact you really should land on this station and buy it 
immediately before you do anything else. Uh, I didn't because we were just kind of messing around and going over the controls, but if this were a real game I was playing, this would be the first thing, literally the first thing that I would do. So to buy it, all you have to do is left click on it and it will automatically go to the proper place on your ship. Now you'll see that we have three out of three equipment. We cannot put another piece of equipment on this ship without doing one of two things, either selling something that we have mounted on there right now or modifying the design of our ship to allow for more equipment to be modified at the trade-off of something else. So to sell something uh, you do the same thing over here, you just left click. If you have uh, more than one of something and you only want to sell part of it, you can like shift right click or something like that. It's not going to come up very often. But at any rate, this is where you find the items that you can buy for your ship. As you can see, they have a Fulcrum Jump Drive Class 2, which you could buy for 23,000 credits. Our Class 1 Jump Drive is fine for now. But uh, yeah, they do have other things. And if you aren't sure what something does, just mouse over it and again, uh, you'll have a description above uh, the window that tells you exactly what the thing does. Uh, now, there's other buttons here. One is you can hit this Available Contracts button. And when you do that, this window here that shows uh, you know, what's for sale will change to contracts that happen to be offered right now. <laughs> and there are different kinds of contracts. This contract, for example, is a race through rings, in, in uh, man-made rings in space, kind of like navigational buoys, and you have to stay within the rings, and you have to beat the other guy, and if you do that, you get 11,100 credits. Uh, and uh, right now there are three missions. Here's another mission. They would, uh, somebody would like us to deliver, uh, to, to get water uh, units somehow. Uh, you can mine water units. Uh, and they want 25 of them and they'll pay 11,100 credits for 25 units. And then, uh, oh, okay, there's another race. Same, uh, same payout. Now, as you do more missions in a particular system, the idea is that the people get to know you, they trust you with more important missions, your mission payouts will in fact go up. So it's kind of low right now, but they will go up as you do other things. So. And then this button becomes uh, items for sale, so it's just a toggle back and forth through the items for sale and contracts that are available. So, let's talk about some other things that we can do. Now, if our ship was damaged, we could hit this button to repair our ship, and it would cost us some money depending on how damaged we were. But we're not damaged right now. Now, this is a very important button, and I personally, you don't have to do this, but I personally like to refuel every time I land. Now, we haven't refueled in a while, so we're going to uh, hit that button. When you do that, a little menu pops up down here. Now, you can use your keyboard and enter the amount of fuel units that you would like to buy. It costs 45 credits per unit. Uh, I don't ever really bother with this, usually. I just say, fill my tank. So we do that, and now we have 499 units, and it costs us some money, but now we won't run out of gas in the middle of space. Uh, so, handy button right there. Uh, license. A license is essentially a, think of it like a business permit that, uh, not that we can't do business on the station right now, obviously we can, but if we buy a license for a million and a half credits, which we obviously don't have right now, but if we were to buy a license on this station, everything we buy at this station, we would get to buy it at a discount. But, but, Everything we sold on this station would also be sold by the same percentage less. I think it's 25%. I think if you get a lot, if I don't quote me on the exact percentage, but I believe it's 25%. So if I buy this license, everything for sale in this list down here is going to be 25% cheaper. But anything I sell to the station, I'm going to get 25% less money for it than I would otherwise. Uh, why is this useful? Well, there are other space stations and planets in this system. So it might be useful to have a license for this station and buy things here at this station and sell them at another station elsewhere in the system. Now, I might get more money for that anyway just because of the nature of how the game's economy works and again, we'll have another episode on that. But 
uh, in part I'll be making some money because I'm buying at a place where things are now cheaper because I've invested money in the station and that's kind of how you get your return on your investment back. So don't buy a license at every station. That's not a good idea. You really want to strategically buy licenses based on where you are, what activities you're doing to make money in the game, and you know if you're trading or mining or whatever, you know what you might want to do to um, you know set up trade routes or find effective ways to. Uh, make credit. So don't buy a license at every station. That's not going to help you. You want to pick and choose where you might want to buy a license. And we're going to talk about that uh, when we talk about uh, trading and the economy system in the game. But this is where you would buy the license is at the station when you're docked or on the planet when, you're, when you've landed there. So that's just what that is. Alright, crew management. Let's click on this. Uh, okay, there's one crew member for hire right now. <clears throat> So let's talk about how this works. Uh, this is the person's initials, TIG. I don't know what that stands for, but it doesn't matter. He's an engineer. Everyone's either going to be engineer, uh, navigational, or uh, weapons, I think. And there's two stats here, skill and loyalty. Uh, no, it's engineer science. Excuse me, engineer science and weapons, I believe. Um, the engineer is going to help you out with things, uh, going to make your shields recharge a little faster. If you have a whole repair system, it'll work better, stuff like that. But there's two stats here, skill and loyalty. Skill is how good they are at their job. 26 is not very high. Uh, I think it goes up to 100 if I remember correctly. But um, if you were to hire this, if we were to hire this engineer, as we flew around and as he did stuff, he can gain skill. So a low skill isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world starting out because that can be earned. Loyalty can be earned as well. Loyalty, <clears throat> uh, you want a high loyalty because you want the engineer to stay aboard. Remember, you're a mercenary. So is this guy. He doesn't necessarily have to stay with you just because you hire him and you pay him. He may leave. He could leave in theory, any time that you land on a planet or dock at a station, your crew can leave. The higher their loyalty, again, up to 100, the less likely they are to do that. So that's what that means. Loyalty will increase over time as well. So it's possible for me to hire this engineer and over time get him up to a skill of 26. Excuse me, get him up from a skill of 26 to a skill of 100 and from a loyalty of 62 to a loyalty of 100 over time. Uh... And, then, and his pay is 1,540 credits per cycle. I forget how long a cycle is in real time. Uh, I, I want to say it's like 20 to 30 minutes or so. I remember how I told you you could have ships parked in the hangar and it would it would it would ding your bank account every so often. And that's on a cycle basis as well. If you wanted to hire him, you just click this button. If you already have uh, a crew member on your ship you can fire them it would appear down here we're not gonna hire this guy right now there's no point in us doing that right now now the ship we currently have the way it's designed the way it's set up again this will all be explained in the ship design episode uh, you um, we could only have one crew member on our ship at the moment so but but you can change that and you can have ships that have quite a few crew members on them if you really want to there's not much point in having more than three honestly um, but three or four but uh, you know there you go so that's what this does let's close the crew management console with this button down here now there's uh, one more thing we should really look at uh, the news console now the news console is going to change uh, periodically we'll go through all this here in a second but it's gonna change depending on where you are now even if I go other places, you know, you'll recall when we looked at the nav map, there are other planets in the Sapphire system, there are other space stations and things like that. The news that you see here is really just applicable to the immediate area around the space station or planet where you're reading that news. I think it's within about a one sector radius around the sector where you currently are. So when we land on the planet here in a few minutes, the news is going to be very similar if not identical to the news that we're reading right here so 
Uh, but if we were to go to a planet that's farther away in this same system where we are right now, well, the new screen might be very different. So just keep that in mind. Just because you go other places in the Sapphire system doesn't mean that the news console is going to be the same. In fact, it's very likely to be different, so it's worth a look. <clears throat> now, uh, there's three sections here, really. Uh, news headlines, faction reputations, and market conditions. So the headlines will tell you uh, things about uh, m current market conditions and the economy in this game is dynamic it does change from time to time there's somebody else running into us apparently um, it does change from time to time so you need to keep an eye on the news console uh, now let's give us an example due to high production on sapphire platinum and metal values are low what does that mean well if I had platinum or metal which are two mineable materials or purchasable materials at, sp at space stations um, if I were trying to sell them here, I might not get as good. I'm not going to get as good a price for those particular materials as I might uh, at other times on this same space station, or as I might uh, in another space station elsewhere. Now, what it does mean is that if metal or platinum is for sale here, there's a very good chance that it's going to be at a price that is significantly lower than it would ordinarily be. Um, <clears throat> Miners, there's, here's another news item. Miners provide materials for ship tech. Raw material values decrease. So again, raw materials are currently not worth as much at this station as they usually are. Now this won't last forever. It'll just last for a while. And then it'll change. How long? I don't really know. I've never sat here and timed it. But, you know, less than an hour. <laughs> um, but again, other planets and space stations in the Sapphire system are going to have different market conditions and of course in other systems that you go to on the big galaxy map that we looked at before they're going to have their own set of news uh, consoles and their own market conditions and you can because it changes from time to time the economy is dynamic you can really take advantage of opportunities as they come up if your ship is properly equipped so it makes the trading system in this game really kind of interesting more so than other games that I've played uh, space games whose economies even the ones that are dynamic uh, and do have changing conditions often don't really provide opportunities uh, to do different things at different times like in the X series sometimes uh, you know there'll be a surplus of a certain good on a certain station well a lot of times in that situation you don't really do anything different you just make less money for a while which kinda sucks but in this game the way uh, the markets are more localized even within the same system the fact that things change can really create some different opportunities so I would encourage you to look at the news console anytime you land on a station a to make sure it still says the same thing but B you might have gone somewhere else and the news console would be entirely different anyway so another headline here local markets report rising value for clothing and fabric so if you happen to have those items uh, with you um, <clears throat> or something that there's no clothing item in the game but there are textiles uh, so if you had textiles and you could sell them here you'd make more money than you normally would so keep an eye on the headlines that's what all that means now let's talk about faction reputations now overall our reputation level in this in the sapphire system is good now in this game because you're a mercenary an independent mercenary your reputation is going to vary from system to system so just because everybody loves you in the sapphire system doesn't mean that everybody's gonna love you in the system next door. In fact, in the Thuban system, which is very, very close to this one, pretty much everybody will hate your guts by default. And you won't want to hang around there for very long if you can help it. Uh, so you just have to really kind of take this one system at a time. Uh, you can change your reputation. So let's talk about the different faction here. There's energy, that's short for energy companies. So think of this as corporations. Then the Navy, which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, rebels, the Guild, which is another criminal organization. 
Uh, so Rebels and Guild are really kind of the same thing in a way. I think you, for reputation purposes, you can think of it that way. And then Miners, uh, which are exactly what they sound like. And the starting system, uh, the corporations, the energy corporations love us, the Navy loves us, and the Miners love us, and the Rebels and the Guild, they don't like us very much. But that's okay, because there's hardly any here anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, we can change our reputation in this system. If we look, go back to the, uh, let's close the news console for just a moment and go back to our contracts. If we go back to our contracts, um, on certain contracts, you can see that, uh, let's see. Yeah, Sapphire Energy is offering a mining contract for water units. So this contract is actually being offered by the Energy Corporation faction. And if you complete this contract, not only will you get this money, but you'll actually uh, increase your reputation slightly um, with the energy companies. So some of the contracts are going to be offered by uh, one of those factions. Let's go back to the news console. <clears throat> So you can change your reputation. Now, it takes a long time to make significant changes in your reputation. That is in, in, by design. The idea is that, you know, these companies, the Navy, they're, you know, you're a mercenary. You might just be passing through. You know, why invest a lot of time and effort on you? So you've got to stay. If you really want to change your reputation in the system, you've got to stay for quite a while and do mission after mission to make a big impact. It's not designed to change very quickly. So, just be, uh, be careful who you're doing missions for. In other systems, you'll rarely, rarely, if ever, see a mission for the Rebels or the Guild uh, in Sapphire, the starting system. But if you go out to other systems, you will see them. And if you're not anxious to increase your reputation with those factions, you want to avoid those missions. Uh, generally speaking, I would say... Uh, very generally speaking, I would say that you're better off increasing your reputation with the lawful factions than the unlawful factions, but, you know, that's just me. Um, local market conditions, this tells you prices of different, current prices of different uh, commodities. These prices will change as the news system updates and the headlines will change and so on and so forth uh, are on the same kind of schedule and the prices here will in fact reflect any market conditions that are described in the news headlines um, there's a button here where you can view your last quest message there are missions in the game uh, that where you know early on when we first started uh, this series there was a big wall of text up here in the corner if I wanted to see that again I could hit that button I could see what was in my uh, hangar there's nothing in my hangar right here uh, oh, one other thing, uh, if you want to see your current statistics, this is a good place to do it. Shows your call sign, your current uh, net worth, your uh, civilian rating, which is based on training and the completion of uh, civilian missions and uh, trading missions and things like that. And then rank, which is your military rank, which is to do with military missions. Uh, not necessarily combat missions now, but missions offered by the military, uh, which may or may not actually involve you shooting anything and blowing it up. Uh, we've done zero paid contracts, we've done, we have zero military rank, we have zero kills, uh, zero uh, fleet, so that's because we're just starting. So that's everything that's pretty much here. Uh, system information will give you some flavor text about uh, the Sapphire system and uh, the uh, level of strength or the relative uh, level of strength of the various factions um, and that is useful information so don't ignore that alright so that's pretty much everything in the inventory console so let's leave the space station and I am going to show you how you land on a planet uh, it's not hard. Uh, it looks going to look harder than it is. Just like docking on that space station. The first time I tried to dock on a space station, I was very intimidated. But in fact, it's way easier than it looks. Okay, so let's go to our navigational console. Now, you will recall that... Uh, let me zoom the map in. 
that I told you that these green plus signs on the edge of the planet represent the location of cities. Well, the uh, the one with the box around it is the main city, uh, kind of the capital of the planet. You can think of it that way. So we are going to land on the capital city. Now, if we were in another, you know, if we were in another uh, sector and we wanted to jump uh, in here, what I would advise you to do is to, is if you wanted to land on this green plus, I would advise you to put your nav marker just outside of it. Don't put it too close. You don't want to jump right into the planet's atmosphere. If you're going too fast in the planet's atmosphere, just like the space shuttle, you will burn up and die. So I, you know, it's a better idea to put your nav marker um, just outside, just, just, just right outside where the city is. Now we don't have to do that because we're already in the same system. But that's what I would do if I were jumping into this sector from another sector. Uh, I would position the nav marker, just, you know, kind of like that. And then it would be, um, it's easier to safely land on the planet in that way. So we'll, we'll get the nav marker back out of the way. And we're going to head <coughs> towards this uh, city. And we're going to land on the planet. So let's get back out of the nav uh, map. We're going to adjust our course because we're kind of flying sideways at the moment. And uh, now you will note that uh, you cannot see the uh, you can't see the city from space. If I look down here, uh, you really can't see where the city is. Now, as we get a little closer, we might be able to see it, but at the moment we can't see the city. So just more or less line your ship up with where the city is uh, on the nav map, where it's marked on the nav map, and point your ship in that direction and get going that way and uh, you'll be able to find the city pretty easily because those docking rectangles, those red rectangles that turn green when we got ourselves lined up properly with the docking bay, those will appear uh, when you get close enough uh, those those will and close enough is pretty far away uh, but when you get close enough those will appear to guide you towards the city all right we have entered the gravity field of the planet you'll note that the sphere of the planet is already starting to kind of change as we enter the earth's atmosphere uh, the earth this isn't the earth uh, as we enter the planet's atmosphere now uh, at a certain point we'll have to turn on our IDS you'll note that we now have an altitude reading because we're close to a planet so I'll be turning on the IDS uh, any time now okay once it says that I don't know if you could hear that on YouTube but the ship's computer just came on and said that um, the avionics we're switched to planetary mode. Okay, and there is the city. So we're gonna adjust our pitch, and right now we're flying like an airplane. Now, uh, just a little piece of advice, you'll note that my speed is fairly low, although we can speed up a little bit. But I would advise you to keep your speed under 1400 meters per second. If you're much above that, you're gonna burn up in the atmosphere. So, that's kinda your speed limit. Now. Same thing when you're taking off from the planet, same story, about 1400 until you get clear of the atmosphere is going to be your speed limit. So <clears throat> stay under 1400 and you'll live. Go less than 1400 or more than 1400 and you uh, will burn up in the atmosphere. So try not to do that. All right, so now basically we just follow these rectangles. Uh, just like we did for the docking bay. That's the city right here below us. Now, we don't have to land on the city. We can land anywhere, basically. Um, we're not going to do that right now. We're going to land on the... We're going to land at the city. Um, and you gotta... You gotta keep your course, you know, adjusted. Uh, because right now, you know, I was telling you, we're just flying through a cloud right now. Uh, and you, there is weather at times, um, 
there are planets I've landed on where I had to land in the middle of a thunderstorm and there was wind and it blew the ship around. But right now we're flying like an airplane. Unlike when we were in outer space, we are now flying like an airplane. Uh, and so... Uh, but you can still use W, A, S, and D to adjust the heading of your ship. You can use the mouse to point your ship in a little bit different direction. Now when you get close enough... <clears throat> when you get close enough, just like the space station, just like the space station, the docking tractor beam is going to grab a hold of your ship, and it will, uh, it'll kind of suck you in to the docking platform. You don't have to worry about, um, you don't have to worry about trying to land the thing like it's on an aircraft carrier or a runway or anything like that. You just get close enough to the landing pad uh, and the docking tractor beam will take care of the rest. You could technically even come down on the landing, landing pad nose first straight up and down straight down towards the landing pad and the docking tracking beam is going to make sure that you don't get killed. So just keep those rectangles green and don't go faster than about 1400 and get close enough to the docking uh, pad and the docking tractor beam will take over when you get close enough. It's really not that hard. It's certainly not as hard as it may look. You can do the all and I would recommend by the way once you've landed hit the backspace key and cut your engines because you're just gonna burn fuel uh, while the doctor, docking tractor beam has you <coughs> excuse me sorry if that was loud uh, the docking tractor beam has me right now I could run my engines, but I'm just burning fuel for no purpose. So hit the backspace key to um, cut your engines while you're here. Now, all the same things that you could do uh, on the space station, you can do here. There are different contracts here. For example, here we could take a contract where the Navy would like us to place a satellite in orbit of the planet. We must take the satellite to a waiting ship and place it inside the green highlighted box under the ship. Um, <coughs> And then they'll pay us money for that. Um, here we could locate a lost item for the Navy. We've been challenged to another race. They like doing that. Um, we could uh, clean a mobile solar array. Um, you use that with your uh, tractor beam. So, yeah, all the stuff that you can do uh, at the space station you can do here. You can enter the city, uh, which looks remarkably like entering the... Uh, station <laughs> uh, it really doesn't look any different and uh, you can there's no hangar here no hangar but you can d go in the shipyard and the weapons lab and things like that so in other respects um, you know conducting business on the planet is just like <clears throat> conducting business on a space station there is a way that you can land on a planet and get out of your ship and walk around but we're gonna cover that in a later episode um, about how to do that because the character that we're using right now does not have the funds uh, necessary to purchase the equipment that's required to do that. My other character I think does so uh, we'll uh, we'll get to that kind of later on. So yeah so you could do everything here. So now let's say that we have uh, let's refuel our ship just for fun uh, and I'm losing money because I'm not doing anything to make money I'm just buying gas. <coughs> But uh, let's say that we wanted to, now we've, uh, we have uh, conducted our business and we want to leave the planet. We want to take off and return to outer space. After all, this is an outer space uh, game. So, just like, um, just like leaving a space station, all you have to do is close the inventory console and then uh, all you have to do is uh, remember to be in IDS mode and give it some gas and don't hit anything uh, and it'll give you these bars but you don't have to follow them necessarily uh, and you can see the space station already uh, in orbit above uh, the planet and again just don't go over 1400 and uh, you won't burn up in the atmosphere. You can burn up on the way out just as easily as you can on the way in. Um, 
but uh, yeah, this is it's just that easy and just point your ship at outer space and uh, you'll get there. It'll take a little bit of time and you'll see if I let go of the mouse gravity will start to pull the ship back down. So you, you have to stay on the controls at this point because gravity still has the, the planet's gravity is still uh, a powerful force on uh, the ship and our trajectory. So you know just uh, keep that in mind and you're just like the computer said that our avionics uh, mode was activated uh, the computer will notify us when we're clear of the atmosphere uh, as well so you just kind of ease on out don't get in too big of a hurry and you won't run into any problems with friction with the atmosphere and uh, <clears throat> You know, it does take a little more fuel to land on a planet and to take off from a planet than it does to land on a space station and leave that same space station. But, it's, uh... Alright, the computer just notified us that the avionics have been switched to outer space mode. That means that we are basically clear of the planet's atmosphere and, uh... We can switch back to inertial mode if that's what you want to do. You can go faster than 1400 um, to get moving a little bit more. And uh, yeah, we're back in outer space. There's the planet where we took off. And you can still see the city down there because we're still pretty fairly close to the planet. Um, but uh, yeah, and there's some, there's, some, uh, there's some water, some ocean on the planet. But it's it's a pretty seamless uh, it's a pretty seamless experience. You know, there's no loading screens, no nothing. Uh, but uh, yeah, so at any rate, we have now seen how to land on a space station. We've uh, talked about the inventory console, and we've uh, talked about all the things you can do there, and how you do them, and how everything's color coded, and we've gone over how to land on a planet uh, at a city on a planet and how to uh, how to leave and return to outer space so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial uh, when we come back we will probably talk about uh, mining uh, it's you might say why would we have an entire tutorial on mining and it's because there's actually more to it than you might think uh, but uh, yeah, when we come back, we'll do a, a, an episode about mining because it's an important thing to be able to do. Even if you don't spend that much time doing it, you're still probably going to want to know how to do it. So, um, to end the episode, I am going to... Whoops. I'm going to uh, maneuver the ship uh, into the docking bay uh, like we have talked about before. And I'm just using the afterburner a little bit. And I'm using the W, A, S, and D keys to get that blue cursor lined up with the docking bay. And it doesn't have to be exact. You can, <laughs> to be honest, you can fudge it a little bit. If you scrape the top of the docking bay, uh, nothing bad is going to happen to you. You won't have a repair bill. The space station won't open fire on you or anything like that. So it's it's really it's really pretty easy, but we're going to uh, you can save at any point in this game, which is really nice. You can be out in the middle of nowhere and save. And we're going to save right here. So when we uh, come back, we'll do that mining episode. Uh, but uh, until then, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it's helped you, uh, you know, not be quite so intimidated by the uh, landing system in the game. And, uh, yeah, hope you're doing well. Hope you continue to do well, and I'll see you in the next one.